John Twist of University Motors. And today we're gonna to talk about fuel sending units. This is a fuel sending unit from a 1969 MGC, right? Now there's a couple things that can go wrong with it. One, the easiest, is the float is no longer a float, it's a sink. <laughs> and it, it fills up with gasoline. And no matter what you do, it's always sitting on the bottom of the tank because it's as heavy as the gasoline is in the tank. So that's not the case here. This, this is good. Shake it, listen to it, look at it. If, it. if it looks good, it's good. The whole reason you're fiddling with this is because something's wrong. So it, all this is is a wire wound rheostat. So let's take him apart. Well, let's, t let's test him first. Let's take our, our uh, ohmmeter here my handy dandy moving coil, Fox Valley. Ohm meter, which won't quite go to zero. Not quite, almost, it'll almost, it'll almost zero. Must need a battery, but we're almost at zero. We're, we're reading just, just, we're on the one scale. So we're only off by, uh, two tenths of, of an ohm here. So we're gonna put one contact on the lug, which would take normally take the green with black wire, going back to the fuel sending unit, put the other one on the sending unit itself, and here we can see that we've got, um, well maybe 22 ohms, and it goes up to, uh, actually goes up to about 300 ohms, but, as, as we move it, sometimes it's erratic and it, uh, it, it doesn't move. You see how it bumps there, it's at zero, you know, and it, it bumps, it, or infinite rather, it bumps around some. So you can buy a new sending unit, but the quality of the new sending units isn't as good as the original Smith's units. So let's take a look at the couple things that go wrong with this. As we take them apart, easy for me to say, we get underneath these tabs, move these tabs up out of the way. And the cover comes off. Sure it does. It usually does. I'm sure I can get the cover off here. There it goes. There is a spring. What happened to my spring? Here it is. So there's a spring that sits here on the underside of here and that pushes, that pushes this arm across this wire wound re resistor. That's all there is to it. It's just as simple as that. No magic, no solenoids, no transistors, no printed circuits. So, and this guy itself comes out, okay? So you can take him out you know, with some difficulty. Now there is a piece of wire here that sometimes breaks. I don't know if you can even see this piece of wire. It goes between this isolated lug, isolated up to here, all, so it's not contacting ground, and goes all the way and then begins to wind all the way around and the other end of this is attached to ground. Sometimes this wire itself breaks. You can't solder this wire, it's a resistor wire, it won't take solder, but instead, you take a, a thin, uh, just a one strand of like six, 16 gauge wire and you make a loop and you put it around here and put a loop in the other end of the wire and then take this wire and put it through that loop and solder it and the solder will stick to the copper wire and it will surround this wire and restore the connection. So you can sometimes repair it if this wire is broken. That's not what's going on here. We're just gonna take some, this is 2000 paper. We're just gonna scuff this up just a little bit. 
the 2000 paper. Mostly just to clean him. Then we'll take the underside of the arm, take the underside of the arm, and we'll clean him. Feed this happy boy back through. Well, I guess we've got to feed him through the right way, huh? And we're going to put a little extra bend on the arm. Put the spring back on. Put the cover back on. Bend the tabs back over in place. Now let's take a look at our guy here and see if he's any more, we're not worried about the, the accuracy, we're just interested in that it, in fact, it, 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 does, it does move. So it's nice and smooth, doesn't jiggle around like it did before. So it should give a pretty good accurate reading up on the dash. What's on the dash is just a voltmeter. This is just a rheostat. So it's a, it's a pretty straightforward uh, electrical circuit. Not unlike the circuit for the sending unit for the, for the temperature gauge, uh, 68 through 80. So sometimes, most often, quite frankly, you can, re you can repair these, even if they're jammed up. You can buy a new float. If your old float is sunk, you can buy a new float. When you go to put this thing back together, there's a rubber seal that goes on the back side when you put it into the tank. And there's a, uh, it's an ARA 1501 uh, and an ARA 1502 on the outside. I use grease on everything. I love using grease. Anyone who's seen me work, I love grease. Put grease on all this stuff, get it all in, in place, and then tighten up that ring on there really, really snugly, and it'll work just like new. Quick, easy. It's a lot better than, than some of the replacement ones that don't have as many windings on that Bakelite board that you saw in there. So anyway, easy schmeasy. Visit our website, our University Motors website, and uh, sign up for the things you might want to sign up for. If you've got something going on with your club, you want to you want to have uh, have me come by and do a tune-up seminar or something. Love to do that. Electrics, fix stuff like this. Um, get in touch with me. And until then, safety fast. Mm -hmm.